And let's discuss this with our panel. And, and Eva, McCarthy uh, told CNN today he thinks it's going to be a good day. Tomorrow he's offered all these concessions. Uh, for people out there who are just, you know, just got back from vacation, they don't understand what's going on, what do these people want? What do these hardliners want? What is their issue with Kevin McCarthy other than he's, you know, he's a swamp creature, blah, blah, blah? Like, what, what, what tangibly are they looking for? Well, they have a range of issues with him. You know, some will argue that he wasn't loyal enough to the former president. Uh, some will argue that rank and file members don't have enough power in Congress. I think that is why that 72 hour rule to review bills. Um, was instituted or proposed in the rules change. Um, but really, there's going to be no end to their demands, uh, even if he is uh, able to successfully pull this off. And I think that this whole episode really illustrates that, you know, you can't abandon your principles in pursuit of power because it ultimately may not work out for you in the end. We'll have to see. I think that uh, over time, these members that are challenging him might get sort of worn out by the process, right? This could stretch on and on and on. And then uh, maybe in the final hour, he's, he's able to pull it out. But I think if anyone in Washington tells you they know with certainty what's going to happen, they're lying. So uh, former Republican Congressman Charlie Dent was on the show earlier, and he said basically that he thinks that Kevin McCarthy has been offering too many concessions for too long to this wing, this MAGA wing. Uh, not all 14 of them are that, but a lot of them are. Um, what do they want other than not Kevin McCarthy? Well, the ability for any single one of them to be able to basically call a vote of no confidence and keep, kick him out as speaker. But that's still, I, I no, mean, that's still not Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> it's just like it's, it's in the future, not just today. You know what and, I mean? And he already offered them the ability for any a group of five to say that. So they want for one person to be able to say that. The other thing that they've asked for is for leadership to not play in Republican primaries, which would also be a break from, from precedent. I think that they're essentially asking Asking him to abandon other members of his conference at that point in order to get these votes. So he's really stuck in a rock and a hard place. And the two sides are playing a game of chicken right now and trying to, to see who will wear down first. And, it, and some of the demands are not ridiculous, right? Having more time to read a bill, oh, that's, sure. that's not a ridiculous demand. No, and paying for legislation by making cuts elsewhere, this is, that's, that's more mainstream, traditional uh, Republican fare. You used to work on the Hill for the, for the other side, the Democrats. Uh, what do you take? What's your take on all this? Well, normally, chaos and dysfunction consumes the party heading into the minority. Right. It's consuming the party that's heading into ma the majority right now. If you look at what's going on on the Democratic side, they had a relatively easy transfer of power from Nancy Pelosi to Hakeem Jeffries. Their signature achievement in the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, uh, capping the price of insulin at $35, happens, happened yesterday. You don't hear a lot of people talking about challenging Joe Biden in a primary. So there's relatively stability over on in the, Dem in the Democratic Party. And for the party that's heading into the majority, this was supposed to be Kevin McCarthy's week, right? They're consumed with all of this chaos and dysfunction. He may not win it in the first ballot. They've got this fraud heading into Congress who has a whole story about whether or not... Oh, Santos. You know, Congressman Santos, Santos, right. Yeah. You know, these are the two headlines that Kevin McCarthy and House Republicans are dealing with. And they also... You know, Democrats picked up a seat in the Senate. So this is not how Republicans thought they would be starting the new year. And it's, you know, a real problem for them heading into, like, trying to govern. How are they going to pass a debt ceiling? How are they going to fund the government? How are they going to do anything in the House? They're not. <laughs> Simply put. I mean, look, you ask what, what do they want, these people. They want to decimate the Republican establishment as we all know it. Right. I got, I got a fundraising email today at noon from Congressman Andy Biggs saying, I need $30 donation from you, and I need four weeks in order to mount a pressure campaign against McCarthy and his type of people. Now, what's that tell me? That tells me that Biggs has not only grown in power at a time where we just really didn't think he would, but these people really believe they have that power to decimate the Republican establishment. They will not rest until it's done. They don't want a guy like McCarthy there because they think he stands for nothing. They think he'll make deals with the Democrats. Is that the worst thing? Those of us who spent time on the Hill know that's the only way that things get done. But this is what they saw Trump do. They thought that Trump stuck it to the Republican establishment. So they're doing Trump's work. They're continuing to do that. And I find it problematic because then, again, these extremists hold the power. They're holding Kevin McCarthy in the toughest place. And let's remind people who Kevin McCarthy is. I think he'll pull it off tomorrow, no doubt. But you do. I do. I do. Because let's again not forget who he is. He's a political animal. Sure. When Speaker Ryan was in the speakership, Ryan wanted nothing more than to be the policy guy. And he got to do all that because guess who it is right man? 
that was McCarthy. McCarthy was the political animal who was ready to play the dirty political games that Speaker Ryan didn't want to do. And now he's in a tough fight, but he's going to prove himself tomorrow to be the political animal he's always been known to be. But, okay, so let's assume that the nine skeptics who wrote the letter, Chip Roy, et cetera, that they, they come around. Okay, that's, that's certainly possible. There's a reason that they're not never Kevins. They're just skeptical of Kevin. But these five, he can only afford to lose four of them. Who's going to buckle of these five? I mean, I, I, I just don't know. They are all out there. They have nothing to lose, it seems to me. I mean, other than the Republican Party. I, think they, they <laughs> I, I actually think that he wins it eventually. But for these five folks, they kind of have to, they've gone out there. I think they kind of have to push this to a second ballot and really try to at least embarrass him. Um, because after that, I mean, they're, go they're out there. They're all out there. They're kind of all in on pushing this. So, you know, and again, like, MAGA wins here. I mean, Trump is endorsed Kevin McCarthy. But can I just say, no, Steve Kevin Scalise could have done something. Kevin. They could have gone for the jugular here and tried to flip four Republicans. Say, we'll give you something. Let get in this with us. Democrats, again, just didn't play hardball, I feel. And I know that's me saying putting it on the Democrats, but you want to save democracy? Don't end up with a crazy well, I, I think Democrats Don't are actually it. really happy watching this all play out because it's literally mm -hmm. chaos and dysfunction. This is the MAGA Republican Party on display for the American public to see. They're pretty happy with what's going on. It's a shame that this is the ruling party of, <laughs> of the House, but this is what you know people voted for, and I don't think Rep Democrats feel any pressure to bail them out but on. But is, isn't this exactly why Senate Republicans cut that deal with Senate Democrats to path, pass that giant spending bill? Because they just look at the House Republicans and they think these guys can't do anything. They can't do this. And Kevin McCarthy says that if he becomes speaker, those are the sorts of things that he'd block in the future. And when, when you talk about Democrats, I'm hearing exactly what you said from Democratic lawmakers. They say that this is evidence of the inability of the GOP's inability to govern and that this is what's going to happen for the next two years. One told me they thought this was going to metastasize. And this is what they're building their argument on for 2024 to try and take back the House of Representatives. So I don't think that you're going to see them step in and try and bail out Kevin McCarthy here. But don't you think this also just like suggests that we are going to have a government shutdown. We are going to have the debt ceiling chaos. We are going to see, I mean, all of that's, if he can't even win the speakership, 218 votes, it's pretty, with a 200, what is it, 2222 votes? I mean. 218. Yeah. 218, yeah. No, but I mean, like, he has, he has a yeah, cushion of four votes. Cushion. Then how are they going to pass, like, Voting for Kevin McCarthy is nothing like voting, voting to raise the debt ceiling. That's, that's an <laughs> ugly vote. We could. I mean, it's, it certainly doesn't inspire a lot of confidence about the, the competence of our government. But I will say, I don't know, you know how many tears I shed for McCarthy because at the end of the day, I do think that it shouldn't be a coronation, right? Leaders should be challenged. Uh, I think that we have to be concerned about the people who are challenging McCarthy, but ultimately, um, you know, he should he should have to fight for the speakership. Sure, it shouldn't be coronation. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have some predictions here. You guys both think he's going to get it. We'll see what happens. I'm not so sure. Thanks to all.